very good afternoon to everyone present here. On behalf of CMR University School of Legal Studies, I would like to welcome you all to this insightful session based on the topic, Higher Education in India, A New Vision, organized by the Center for Studies on New India. We have with us Dr. Vithal Podar, who is a Senior Research Fellow for the Mythic Society Bangalore, as our honorable guest speaker who will be enlightening us through this session. I would like to extend a heartfelt welcome to you, sir. I would also like to welcome our respected Dean, Professor Dr. T. R. Subramanya, our beloved director, Professor our beloved director, Professor Dr. Vijay Praneshwaran, our teachers and all the participants. To seek the blessings of the God, I would like to invite Vagami Trivedi, a student of CMR University School of Legal Studies, to sing the invocation song. working 
as a research professor in one of the prestigious uh, institutions of this country. Earlier he had come here, three or four months back he had come here and he had delivered a wonderful lecture. The Center of New India or the Center for New India has various objectives. One or two things I just intend to bring home. The first one is to bring in the ancient established culture and to ponder over how far it is relevant and what, tax, what exactly are its utilitarian value. The second important thing is lots and lots of developments are taking place and have taken place in the preceding 10, 10 years. And how best we can make use of this. And how the educational system of this country should be bettered so that everyone is in a position to reap the harvest of it. Now you might be knowing, in another 20 years, as per the economists of the world, almost 60% of the world's labor is going to be supplied by the state of India. And when we are supposed to supply 60% of the world labor, now skill is the most important aspect. And how far and how can, how best, we will be in a position to evaluate the best practices in the country. With this objective in mind, the new education policy has been introduced. And in the new education policy, remember lots of changes have been brought in. It is not confined to the discipline alone. And you are supposed to study if you want to. Nobody can compel you. The multidisciplinary approaches. And in this multidisciplinary approaches, you are throwing your hat itself saying that you are not only skilled in one area, but you are more skilled in other areas as well. This will help you, remember, to come up in life and establish yourself and in a position to establish your credence in the society. With this in view, we have invited uh, Professor Vital Fota and he will be speaking on higher education in India and new vision. How best it is going to help us. And at the end of the talk, if you have any genuine doubts, remember you are most welcome to uh, ask and clarify uh, by way of putting questions. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. I would like to request our Dean, sir, to kindly present the bouquet to our guest speaker, Dr. Vithil Podar, as a token of gratitude. Thank you, sir. It is indeed my privilege to introduce the speaker of the day, Dr. Vithil Podar. Sir holds an MA and PhD degrees from the Department of Ancient Indian History and Epigraphy, Karnataka University, Dharwad. His PhD topic is Public Finance in Early and Medieval Deccan from 6th to 13th century AD. He is the recipient of ICHR JRF for his PhD. Presently, he is working as a senior research fellow in the Mythic Society Bangalore and visiting faculty in social sciences in IIM Jammu. Prior to these assignments, he has worked as a professor of history in Shishadripuram First Grade College for 19 years and as an adjunct faculty in Shishadripuram Institute for Management Studies for 13 years. He has also served in Nagarjuna Degree College, Yelahanka, Bangalore, as academic coordinator and principal for five years. His areas of research include socio-economic, cultural and administrative history of India, environmental studies, corporate governance, management systems and business ethics. 
He has presented 30 research papers on different topics. He is a life member of six academic bodies. So far, he has participated in more than 50 seminars, FDPs, conferences and workshops as a resource person. Till now, he has visited nine universities in the USA and one in Singapore. In April 2018, he was invited to present a research paper on environment and Jainism, a study of Jaina monuments in ancient Karnataka, in a conference organized by the University of North Texas, USA. We are honored to have you here, sir. Now, I would like to invite Dr. Vithal Kodar to share his valuable insights with us. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Revered uh, Professor Subraman is a fatherly figure to me as far as uh, academics is concerned. Professor Ramya, coordinator of the program, enlightened faculty members of the CMR University and dear students. I thank the organizers for your wonderful introduction. I don't know whether I deserve that kind of introduction. I'm just an ordinary person. Yes, I have done something as far as academics is concerned. Coming to today's topic, I don't say I am delivering a lecture because I deliver, to deliver the lecture, you need a great scholar, like Professor Subraman. I am an ordinary person. I would like to call it as a monkey bath. So just I will be sharing some of my thoughts since I am into academics since last 28 years. What is my perception and what is my vision when it comes to higher education? What is my analysis? How I am I analyzing the developments relating to higher education? And more than that, yeah. yes, definitely there is a PPT. I will be sharing uh, my thoughts in a, a, in a particular order. More than uh, me delivering a lecture relating to this topic, because it is a very important issue, very much related to all the stakeholders, both the students and teachers. Once I shared my thoughts also, I want a very active participation from both the faculty and students. And I will be very happy whatever I have shared. And if you say I am not right and if you correct me as far as my thoughts are concerned, I will be very much grateful to you also. So before I share my thoughts as far as what is my vision when it comes to, you know, former president of India, Dr. Abdul Kalamji, he wrote, had written a book, Vision 2020. So now we are in 2022. What is my vision as far as academic field is concerned? How I analyze and what are my aspirations? What I expect from all the stakeholders, it may be government, it may be an institution, it may be policy making bodies. So that uh, I will be sharing at the end of my presentation. So uh, before I start discussing my thoughts, I would like to draw your attention to some of the developments or since I am a teacher of history, what is the perception of uh, education when it comes to not necessarily higher education. I would like to quote here the Chandogya Upanishad must be knowing when you talk of ancient Indian history. Uh, one side uh, the Vedas are there, Upanishads are there. Upanishads are, are known as the philosophical works. Once you read Upanishads also you will be able to understand the philosophy which existed in India also. So, Chandogya Upanishad talks about uh, the quality of education. We don't know the, the date of uh, uh, this particular Upanishad also because different dates are given. Definitely few thousand years old work. What was our perception? Today we talk about quality, quality circles and all these things also. Chandogya Upanishad has very systematically in, a, in this pyramid it describes the 
quality concept of quality as far as education is concerned when you come to the first point it says one should have commitment see how beautifully it says unless i have got that commitment i cannot think of bringing in quality also so from bottom to top when you talk of the pyramidal structure also commitment in sanskrit we say pratibandhata also i should have commitment unless i have got commitment i cannot think of quality also once i have got commitment then i will develop competence once i develop competence i will get the confidence and once i develop confidence i will be able to give the best of the best as far as education is concerned i'd like to call it as three c's it is very much applicable even to all institution it is very much applicable to a student it is very much applicable to a teacher and institution if these are three c's are there in an institution i am very very sure whatever you are saying in any it will become a reality <coughs> we keep on uh, writing so many documents and uh, draft papers or so all right let them be there but we first think of these basic concepts i have got commitment because of uh, this particular commitment i will be working in a, like that particular direction and ultimately i develop competence and because of the competence i will develop the confidence and once these things are there ultimately 3 c's is equal to e excellence and once there is excellence ultimately whatever you want to do in your life that can be achieved so one important aspect think about this aspect and when you talk of higher education see when you talk of uh, education sector primary is there secondary education is there but my focus will be exclusively on higher education also higher education scenario is entirely different compared to primary education in primary education lot of responsibility is there on teachers the responsibility of students and the ratio is entirely different but when it comes to higher education you, you are aware of all these developments also or these aspects teachers are there students are there management is there government is there today they are talking about the corporate world and society all these stakeholders they play a very very important role and they have to work in a group unless they work in a group you cannot think of bringing in changes also so that's why when you talk of higher education we need a multi dimensional approach in bringing in reforms in the higher education why we are not able to bring in desired results because today i keep on attending many seminars and workshops also relating to higher education so my argument is we don't have multi dimensional approach it is a one sided approach government says something you do it and sometimes i ask a question how far government is competent i am not blaming anyone i am not questioning anybody's authority also government is there to govern government cannot act also and it need not act only show the think of the governance also because many times whenever i go to seminar they talk about nak and other aspects also why we are not able to get the desired results as far as higher education is concerned we don't have multi dimensional approach how many especially whenever a policy or a program is implemented how many times you ask our students how many times should we take the teachers into confidence while deciding all these things this should happen if it doesn't happen then ultimately we are not able to get the desired results so that's why first you think of your stakeholders second thing is you think of this multi dimensional approach as far as higher education is concerned then we have what many issues when it comes to higher education many of the issues must be having the in your own institution or you must have experienced these issues also uh, as far as higher education is concerned we talk about uh, development of uh, knowledge society we talk about uh, privatization uh, globalization we are talking about uh, indian universities act of uh, 
are all aware of uh, as the since it is the law department also see the funny things while facing before you these issues also date of the act bearing in 2022 and uh, which is the regulating authority or the controlling authority as far as the functioning of uh, Indian universities and higher education is concerned we refer to the Indian Universities Act of 1904. Can you think of bringing in reforms in the education sector by following an act which is uh, nearly 118 years old and that was, that was not introduced by us. You know the background of the Lord Curzon was the uh, Viceroy and on the recommendation of the Rally Commission this particular act was introduced and if we keep on quoting the provisions of this act today also to bring in reforms in the society my question is are you able to or are we going in the right direction or will you be able to bring in desired results also just I am placing before you this particular aspect government and regulation relating to higher education too many players <coughs> the list is very very small because I thought I should not uh, give a big list. I give the big list. I think the list will run to few pages. Can you think of running the education system with the too many regulatory authorities? So this uh, the issue should be addressed. Societal interest. We talk about education at uh, subsidized rate, government funding and all these things. Questions are asked. How far education should be subsidized? What of debate is going on as far as IITs and IIMs concerned. They say on each student, government spends lakhs and how much student is paying in thousands. I am, if I am right, I am Bangalore is charging somewhere around 28 lakhs uh, for a two years PG diploma course also. <coughs> in reality, the cost is pretty high also. So this is and the democratization of uh, Indian education system we say. But is it happening? That is another question. And we talk about different equations, academics, research, planning, policy making, and ultimately we say we do all these things as far as society is concerned. But is it happening? Another question. Sustainability in higher education. From economic point of view, we we'll talk about uh, sustainable growth, sustainable, uh, sustainability as far as economy is concerned. So these are the issues, another one important uh, aspect. Then what are the challenges? A big list is there. So I am placing before you a very small list. Entry of a foreign universities in India it has become already there it all is there. We used to talk about these things. Next to my university campus or college campus, if MIT or Harvard is going to establish a campus also, what will happen to me? The big question. Many institutions are already scared about these developments also. How you are going to address it? Transparency in admissions, <coughs> sorry, appointments examination process are we transparent question is asked and uh, the answer is to a great extent no quality assurance and quality assessment also <coughs> so, are we doing it the answer is to some extent we are doing but uh, to a great extent it is totally absent as far as higher education is concerned we talk about corporate governance in uh, industry and other fields, but we need corporate governance in academic field. But uh, how many institutions are talking about uh, the implementation of the principles of uh, uh, corporate governance as far as the higher education is concerned? Thanks to COVID uh, problem, we are talking about uh, ICT enabled teaching. MOOCs, online courses and other things. We also talk about reward for research or also as far as higher education. 
education and job market student centric teaching teachers as multiple task force today the challenge before the indian teachers is the only group which is known for its the multiple task is the teaching community a doctor will do only his duty an engineer will do his or her own duty but you think of teacher teacher is also a doctor he is also an engineer he is also a parent he is also a guardian he is also a caretaker he is also a policeman name anything all the duties and responsibilities are assigned to a teacher so this is a challenge how you are going to address this challenge because our we are we are part of a multiple task force also yes one important then the third important aspect is keeping all these things issues and challenges in mind what is the latest development when you come to 2022 also i think you must have seen this uh, paper clipping just it came uh, in times of india uh, 19th times of india just you see one or two lines i give you few seconds time this paper i think is very very interesting and my entire presentation is based on is it visible can you read the lines <coughs> and when you read this paper i think are you getting some new insights what is your reaction looks a very simple news report is it not really nlsi you you know to tie up with iisc iimb for research what is the very simple national law school of india university situated in nagar bhavani they are they are going to sign an mou with the iisc and iim for research any analysis as far as uh, this particular paper to be discussed what is your reaction now my talk starts this paper thank you <coughs> what is your reaction for this particular paper anyone especially students when you read this kind of newspaper clippings try try no problem yeah i think there will be a scientific approach hmm. why is it will be a scientific approach I feel that uh, the education system is mm -hmm. lack of a uh, you know, technical or recent developments. So if the like if uh, if an NLSU is like tied up with the Indian Institute of Science, so there will be a. You know, oh, fine, fine, no problem. Any other uh, reaction? As I say, I will pause for a while. Don't think this paper keeping is a very very simple one. I have shared this paper keeping with nearly one thousand teachers, and they say it is a great threat and a challenge. Why? <coughs> nearly I have shared with this particular keeping. with the nearly more than 1000 teachers different parts of india and some teachers they said no no very very nice development sir nlsiu iisc it is a i am sir coming together so <coughs> the first thing is in the start science was set up uh, to develop uh, overall uh, science 
Synergy of this country. Yeah. I mean, basically, Tata Institute. Science and technology. Yeah, science and technology. Yeah. Science and technology. yeah. yeah. It's basically, research oriented for the yeah. welfare of the nation. <coughs> and mm. Institute of Management is also. Management. Uh, yeah. LLS is law. For entrepreneurship. Yeah. And yeah. LLS is for law. Yeah. But then, um, will it not become more commercial in the sense, uh, more than service mindedness? Mm. Uh, will it not open up to commercial mm. thoughts and Commercial verticals. Yeah, fine, fine. Whatever comes to your mind, you just uh, tell no problem. Any other interpretation or analysis? <coughs> I say just now. I repeat once again. I repeat. This paper keeping has posed a big threat. As far as the existence of many educational institutions are concerned. Yes, so I'm not sure, but in the highlighted parts it says minimum resources. So there's a higher chance of the uh, of the uh, unemployment of teachers and staff. No, forget about that uh, bracket. And just title you see. Yeah, come. No problem. Sir, uh, tying up with uh, law university science background and uh, IMB and all, we can mm. say that they are going in a very practical approach instead of just uh, leaving it to theories and all. So this uh, uh, NLSU has taken a, a step forward in practical theory for students. So it's already saying that the future development of the campus. So we can think that by uh, tying up with these institutes, science and law, mm. uh, so law is, uh, in a way, it is... Uh, going through to know what actually happens in science and IMBs and whatever uh, happens. You can say it's basically it's that. Nice, nice. I'm fine. Okay. You see, have you heard of a word behemoth? B-E-H-E-M-O-T-H. English word. Behemoth. Can you just uh, See the meaning also B E H A M O T H. Behemoth means a giant. Simple meaning is giant. Many of the companies today, we say they are all behemoths. T C S is a behemoth. Eli Soft India is a behemoth. Many many companies. Apple is a behemoth. Many companies. Whether you talk of Infosys, means a big entities. How I analyze this particular um, paper keeping is NLSIU, a law behemoth when it comes to academics. Am I right? IISC, science and technology. IIMB, management. If uh, behemoths are talking about tie ups, where I stand in this competition? That is the question. Got it? Shall I repeat it? <coughs> the paper clipping says big entities of the all these days they were separate entities. IIC 1909. It is a sister concern of uh, Mythic Society where I work. They were all established. Uh, both these institutions were established in 1909 by D. Then Mysore Maharaja. 113 years old institution today it says I cannot think of my independent existence I should go up, go for tie-ups is it not? So what does it indicate we are in the age of multidisciplinary studies you cannot think of existence your own existence you have to rely on others for your survival that's why you see in the coming years, I think within one or two years, I am Bangalore is going to have social science department. IIC has already got management science department. They are going to have medical department. And they are going to have even in the coming days social science department. So that indicates they are in the age of we are in the age of multidisciplinary 
and interdisciplinary studies. That is the great message which we are going to see from this particular type. One important development. Other important developments. <coughs> I have read the government notification. I think teachers may be aware of these developments. Karnataka State uh, Act will be amended. <coughs> what is your analysis about this second development as the students of law? 2000, we had KSU Act and now it is KSPHEI Act. Right now it is bill but it is going to become act. have gone through uh, these points also. One thing is Dr. Atre, who is the scientific advisor to Prime Minister and uh, different governments, he drafted under his chairmanship this particular act uh, bill was uh, prepared based on the recommendation also. It talks about uh, aligning with uh, the NEP and it will uh, replace the existing Karnataka State Universities Act of 2005 general aspects. Fourth point is very very interesting. The bill addresses emerging trends in knowledge generation, knowledge management and knowledge application. This aspect is very well. You forget about uh, technical aspects. What will be the function of an educational institution in the coming days? The bill is very, very clear about this particular thing. Why I am running a college? Why I am running a university? Bill clearly says my college is run for the sake of knowledge generation, first principle. Second thing is, whatever knowledge is generated, that should be managed. And the third thing is, the knowledge which is generated in a college should be applied for the betterment of the society also. How you react for this particular development? What is your reaction? Anyone? <coughs> I, I, in other words, I would like to ask the question, are we doing it in an educational institution right now? We are just uh, imparting information to the students, is it not? Am I right? What an education institution is doing? Some information is there. I don't say it is knowledge. That information is a transfer. We are information transformation entities. But what we should do henceforth, these three things. How you react to this particular development? What is your reaction? <coughs> Anyone? Are we, first you ask a question, are we doing it right now? Except IITs, IIMs and uh, uh, Harvard, Stanford and other things. Are we doing it right now? Yes sir, we are doing right now. Like uh, recently, last time we did internship. Hmm. So whatever we learned, we went through and we at least one person we applied there and it was uh, like helpful for me as well as other students too. So congratulations to CMR. You are right. You are right on the track. Yes. Sir. Yes. 
It should be done. Any other reaction? You are on the right track. But I ask a question, what about remaining 99% of institutions? They are not at all bothered about this concept. Is it not? Share your experiences. Come on, please be very, very interactive. Because it is not a lecture. Especially after the new education policies implementation, hmm. I feel many institutions, of course our institution as well, but many other institutions have been taking the initiative to develop their curriculum and earlier it used to just be that 100 mark paper, but then now that over the period of time has evolved into different other assignments like maybe research assignments and other such assignments which make you think and analyze. So that in itself leads to a leadership quality and also the CPSC uh, curriculum now. There is a big overhaul especially in the last two to three years. Thank you. Yeah, nice. Any other, how you react to this particular very important component? 2022 onwards, when it comes to higher education, this is what an education institution should do. If you don't do, your existence is lost. How you react to this particular development? Any other reactions? No? Okay. Then the next development would be Board of Governors. What will be? Yeah, yeah, fine. No problem. I feel there is still a gap between knowledge generation and application. For example, if we take our GDP, hmm. uh, our country, you know, it's, uh, the nearly it's less than 3% of our GDP is uh, contributed to education sector. Hmm. So in, in compared with other countries, they are like more than six percent of the GDP is contributed to education sector, and still we are like uh, you know less than three percent. And we are talking like uh, I feel there is a lot of gaps, and um, yeah. That's why you feel like we are not able to generate knowledge in our no, country. No, not not only it, it's maybe one of the criteria, maybe one of the reasons. I it, uh, government should focus more on education sector. Then your analysis is, if there is more funding by the government, then only knowledge generation will, will happen. It's not about funding, I'm saying it, it, it should be a focus. Huh. There should be more focus on education se sector. Like, you know, uh, like we are still following the age-old acts or like the age-old policies. Uh, and now we are like, uh, na the national education policy now introduced yeah. in 2020. Till then we were, uh, we were being in another like, uh, age old heart, like it will, it, will, it will be like 50 years or 25 years old policies we will be what we were following. Mm. So I feel there is a lot of lack in us, there is a lot of uh, gaps which need to be addressed in future. Yeah. Yes. Any other reaction? How you analyze or what is your solution? So, G, K, G, K, M and K, A. Sir, Is firstly, huh? uh, I believe that uh, NEP basically was formulated to work, develop the overall quality of the human resource. In the sense, mm. uh, they should be market ready, I mean, fully uh, developed life skills mm. for uh, real practical uh, circumstances of life. Uh, so that was the first thing. See, when we compare our Indian education system to Israel, see, Israel uh, now boasts of having the highest research and innovation. See, uh, even if we take uh, Nobel Prizes, or even if we take the top 100 research yeah, developments, yeah, yeah, that is Israel. When we study the education system of Israel, first thing is their education system is very, very strong. Second thing, uh, there are other aspects of it. And the second thing, it uh, develops this uh, creativity or uh, innovative thinking in the people, I mean the students. Third thing, the skills, the, the overall skills of a person are very good. Uh, see, most people become entrepreneurs, even there is military conscription that develops a person very well. There is compulsory military service. Uh, so person develops that life skills. But then the Indian 
in an education system, you know, there is a lack of this thing. So that is where things are not happening. Why? Because uh, even in the recent Startup India vision, mm. it was not a huge success. Why? Because uh, even though government provided loans and all that, people were not greatly skilled to start their own ventures and there were so many things. So I think more focus has to be on Yes, I agree with you. Problems are there. But I am placing before you these developments. You know Darwin's theory of survival of the fittest. All these days we kept on giving excuses. You just keep on giving excuses. But my suggestion is look at these developments. If I don't generate the knowledge through my course, I will lose my existence. Very strong message is given by the policy makers. I conduct LLB course, ultimately at the end of the course, I should ask a question, did I create some knowledge in my students or did I share some knowledge with my students by delivering this course? If I say no, then my course will lose my existence. That is the threat. That is the challenge. I do MBA. I am just giving the example. Any student, what knowledge I did I gain? So I say just I did MBA for the sake of degree. No, that is not going to happen in the coming days. If K A, sorry K G, K M. KA principle, if it is not taken into consideration while offering a course, that a course, that institution is going to lose their existence in the coming days. So that's why we have to be very, very careful as while developing our vision as far as 22 or 2022 is concerned. Okay, fine. Next uh, suggestion is Board of Governors. You find Board of Governors and Directors where you find in companies. IITs you have got Board of Governors. IIM you have got Board of Governors. But do you have Governors in our institutions? No. Is it not? And Act says, what is the role of a Board BOG? advisory and a regulatory body and I would like to add another word BOG should act as a think tank as far as an institution is concerned how many think tanks we have in our education sector in India western universities we have do you have think tanks only empty tanks we have in our institutions because all the politicians are the chairman many times and uh, you know the situation but that is not going to happen BOJ will be the vision making body as far as education institution is concerned and I have quoted this section also who will be the chairman of the BOJ person of eminence with a demonstrated administrative and leadership capabilities along with abilities to manage complex situations. You see the act says BOG should adopt performance based assessment procedure to promote a second level leadership. BOG is the top, then next it may be vice chancellor, director or a principal or a head of the institution and you should adopt a policy performance based assessment procedure. If you perform, you will survive. If you don't perform, you are not going to survive. That is the strong message which is given in this particular bill also. It also talks about vice chancellors. All these days, we have different kinds of vice chancellors. It says, who will be the vice chancellor 
should empanel only academic visionaries with a transparent background. Men of vision will be the leaders in the coming days. It also talks about appointment of Vaisha, pro Vaisha sir. Fine. Next word is, point is very important. In the coming days, in our education institutions, there will be two kinds of directors. Director of research, innovation and consultancy. Director for internal quality and assurance. So, internal development and policy making. Research, innovation, assessment, all these things are also there. And then another important aspect is restructuring and remodeling of our education sector. It's going to happen in the coming days. Fine. With this background, then ultimately the last question comes, what I must do? Is it coming? Many things are there. I discussed uh, issues, I discussed uh, challenges also. I shall place before you uh, the uh, bill which is going to be presented. I was told already the discussion has taken place and uh, consent has been given and immediately it will become an act also. So, based on these developments, what is my region as far as 2022 is concerned? What I expect from the education? I may be right or I may not be right. If I am wrong, please correct me. Have a new vision for higher educational institution in India. All these days, whatever we did, will it uh, help us in a continuing our education system? No. It should be. That's why radical and progressive changes are needed in the higher Indian higher education institution. Unless you introduce these things, are not going to survive. We need to develop an integrated approach also. What is integrative? Many things should be integrated. They should not be studied in isolation. They should not be studied or discussed in isolation. It is an integrated approach. Globalization of Indian higher education and global standards. Is it happening? I will stop here for a while. I have given this suggestion. This is my vision. Not a globalization of higher education. Please read that point. Globalization of Indian higher education. Is it happening? <coughs> yes. Sir, that way, according to me, globalization of Indian higher education is at a very nascent stage, sir. Yeah. So, earlier, like in the earlier centuries and all, sir, India was known for its education, but then now it's a very different situation hmm. and it's a long way, sir. Huh. So, it is a long way. Have you seen the latest developments? Uh, yes, yes. Sir. Yeah, sir, myself being an engineer. Huh. Yeah, all my friends are there in US and in very good companies. Even mm. one of my friend, uh, she did her uh, law course in Harvard. I mm. think the quality of education and the quality of human resource is improving. Mm. Uh, we are developing that meritocracy and competency uh, stand in par with uh, all other developed countries of the world. Mm. Um, I mean, that competency is there, sir. Uh, even when we see the workforce of US, mm. much of its doctors, scientists, um, even engineers, all are Indians. Mm. No, no, I am asking a question. See, try to understand my question. Indian's presence is felt all over the world. Yeah. Go to NASA, they say 30 percent of the workforce is Indians. Yeah, yeah. That's what I meant. Go to Harvard, they say, Harvard is in US, but managed by Indian teachers and Indian students. Yeah. MIT, Indian students, and Indian professors. 
but address is USA. Yeah. My vision is Indian higher education system should be globalized. How it should be done, or is it happening, or have you seen come across any examples? No, so that's what I that's what I mean. I mean, we are developing that uh, meritocracy and competency to compete on a global scale, with, even with the mm -hmm. students and the employees of mm -hmm. all other parts of the world. Mm -hmm. And we are like, good. Mm -hmm. So that means that our education system is being globalized. Globalized? Yeah. Yes, uh, and they are very, very positive. Uh, but fine. Latest paper the reports you see, IITs, IIMs have been given permission to establish overseas campuses. Bits Pilani, you know, already has got campus at Dubai. And IIM Bangalore shortly is going to have its campus in Singapore. IIT, I think, I don't remember the IIT's name, one of the IITs in India is going to have a campus at Vietnam. And another campus will be there in South Africa. Globalization of, yes. As well, uh, Indian Institute of Science in the research uh, domain, uh, it's now being said uh, the number one <coughs> in the world. Yeah, yeah. So, it's world rankings, yeah, yeah. Times ranking and other yeah, things yeah. also. Yeah. So, that's why my suggestion is, don't think of just a local existence, think of global standards also. You have to compete with the global education institutions. You need not restrict your aims and objectives only with the national and state level interests also. It is suggestion. Stand alone institutions to multidisciplinary institutions. Is it happening? IIT means only engineering college. Is it true now? No. IITs are what history departments, social science department. I teach history in IIM Jammu. Totally unheard, is it not? History is taught to management students. IIC Bangalore has got social science department. IIM Bangalore is going to have social science department also. Multidisciplinary. Why? Economically also it is viable and they say you cannot think of studying a subject in isolation. It should be studied in totality also. So that's why we talk about multidisciplinary institution. Pedagogical reforms. Syllabus should be revised. Questions are thrown. Answers are written. Is it not? What is Indian education system? Discuss. Discuss throw is thrown and students write answers and marks are given. Is it going to be the practice in the coming days? No. Many institutions are giving grades to students without examinations. Must be knowing this. Many IITs, examinations are not compulsory. I was told, the uh, best example is Ashoka University. Exam is just 20% for grading. 80% for assignments, presentations and other things. Pedagogical. Develop a strong legal framework for higher education institutions in India. You have to give an answer. You are all the legal luminaries. Why I have given this suggestion? Legal framework. Why it is required? What is your analysis as the law graduates? Why academic system should have a legal framework? This is my question. In an answer. Try. <clears throat> because without legal framework, whatever we do, it will not have any stand also in the society. Without a legal framework, if you do anything, any time, many times, it will become sort of an illegal activity. Is it not? For everything, there should be 
a legal framework. Think about uh, this particular legal framework. One centralized academic regulatory body. Is it there? No. How many regulatory bodies are there in India? Higher education? Few hundred. One institution governed by few hundred institutions. It is not going to happen. Kautil a long back he said the duty of the government is to govern the people not to do business. Today government <coughs> this regulatory mechanism is a big business. One institution is governed by few hundred institutions or bodies. Is it necessary? It is not at all necessary. Think of one nation one regulatory body, one education system, quality academic governance and leadership. We lack, is it not? Hardly we find this particular concept. My wish is quality academic governance and leadership should be there in uh, educational institutions. Types and academic exchanges. Do you have tie-ups with other institutions, social uh, uh, work, community work, academic exchange programs? Think of tie-ups and academic exchanges. Change management. Change management doesn't mean changing existing management with uh, new, especially members. Change management is a very, very interesting concept in management science that should be implemented in higher education. Transparency and transformation. Where you find a transformation? Only where there is transparency. You cannot think of transformation without a transparency. Why we are not able to bring in transformation in higher education? Because many times our activities are not a transparent. Whatever happens in PCS is not at all happening in any university because the transparency level which you find in PCS you don't find in any university or a college. Hence there is no transformation. Think of both this greater accountability for higher education institution. Is it happening? happening but not at expected level. Think of accountability. My another suggestion is policy making, decision making, policy implementation and periodic review should go hand in hand. They are not separate activities. They are part of the system. We need collective leadership in education, not single leadership. We need collective leadership also. Then academic and administrative networking between educational institutions and policy makers. I would like to draw your attention to Kothari Commission report which was submitted in the year 1966. It is very much applicable to teachers. Many times teachers they have got this grievance as far as management is concerned. Way back in 1966, 56 years ago, our policy was very, very clear as far as performance is concerned. I have just selected few lines. Enhancement of skills among the teachers. 1966, the report said, skill, efficiency, salary, and promotion should be interlinked in order to enhance the quality among the teachers. Way back in 1966, we say, if these things are not there, then a teacher cannot be promoted to next level. But we have forgotten this particular suggestion. Upskilling of both teachers and students. Unless I upgrade myself, I don't have any right to ask my students to get themselves upgraded. I read a 10 years old book and I ask my students to read 
2022 edition book. Is it the right on the part of the teachers? No. I don't read anything, but I ask my students to read for 5 to 10 hours. Think of introspection. Think about yourself. What I do, say, same thing should be said to the student. That's why there is a saying in Sanskrit, Yatha Raja, Tatha Praja. Is it not? Upstilling. And my another suggestion is create some academic platforms. I think you must be doing in your college. I have given some names like debate house to develop skills and other things. Library reader, some names, public speaker, a sort of a public platform. The analyzer, you take up a topic, start analyzing it. Then the open house to develop oratorial, analytical, public speaking skills among the teachers and students. Think of this exercise because education is a capacity, competency building exercise. To do all these things, we need these kind of activities. This one, we need a progressive approach academic culture should be there for professional performance evaluation think of developing a new academic ecosystem because we live in a knowledge society our ancient people they said loka vidya re-envisioning of indian higher education system we need a paradigm shift that's why nep is very very clear it says we are in the age of may rules not a taxi service. Meru stands for multidisciplinary education and research universities. So think about these developments. Development of education institutions as innovation centers and learning organizations. Holistic education system based on talent and excellence. Adoption of integral innovative strategies, qualitative, affordable education system and ultimately you should remember two things, adaptability and adoptability. Unless I adapt myself to these changes, I will not be able to adopt the new developments. Once again I repeat this thing, unless I develop this sense of Adaptability means adjustment, adjusting nature. If I don't develop this uh, nature of uh, adjusting myself to these changes, I will not be able to adopt the new developments and new changes. And I think if I are able to adopt some of these strategies, I am very, very sure 2022 I am going to see a paradigm shift as far as and education is concerned. So with this, I end my presentation and this presentation is now open for further discussion and analysis. Thank you very much. So this PPT will be shared with uh, later also, whatever suggestions are given. Yeah. So there is a debate going on the concept of sustainability. So mm -hmm. my question is, how can we ensure sustainability in higher education? Well, it is very simple. See, by sustainability I mean slow and steady win the race. You know, you must be knowing this. By sustainability I mean don't think of too many things. By sustainability I mean education is the field where you cannot think of bringing in changes overnight. We need a lot of time, but people are in a hurry. Simply, many times our ministers, they say, tomorrow we'll do this. Not at all possible, practical. By sustainability, I mean, set some goals. And those goals should be viable goals. For this year, we say two goals. You need not think of 10 goals or 10 targets and try to achieve this. And if you keep on doing this, I feel if you want to, bringing change in higher education, 
Today, if you start, you will get the fruits after another five years. You cannot think of getting the uh, results overnight. But sustainability, I mean, because some of the challenges cannot be implemented so easily. We need, uh, they are all time tested. We need a lot of time. You have to think, you have to invest, you have to train the people, you have to see the results, you have to see the pros and cons. So that's why sustainability is a very, very challenging thing. Economy, society, education, sustainability is a very, very challenging thing. Thank you. Yeah. Sir, with the colonization of India, hmm. uh, we adopted this Macaulay model of education, yeah. uh, right from elementary education. Hmm. And we adopted this rote learning method, repetitive memorization thing. And after that, you know, as I said, our education is not providing adequate life skills, even you mentioned in the PPT, and I mentioned the point before. What skills which are really required to survive in the practical world, I mean, real world, and to cope up with real world challenges. I mean, our education system is lacking to develop that thing in the student. Mm. And the second thing is, uh, we've been repeatedly trying to be clerks. This clerk mindset is being developed in our education system. Mm. Apart from some doctors and all that, see, whatever study we do, apart from law, engineering, and other systems, ultimately we end up doing clerical mm. work. Mm. Our education system is producing more and more clerks. And we have to, I mean, this decolonization of our education system has to be done. So, yes, you know, what I suggest is, yes, I definitely understand your concern, but now in 2022, that's why I said, uh, last point you just see in my presentation, I said adaptability and adaptability. Some way you have to decide, I have to totally give up whatever has existed in my country, I should start thinking on new lines. My question is here, how long you just keep on blaming the system? You see, just now in the challenges I said, 1904 Act, still we are following. See the situation, I asked this question in one of the meetings. Is it necessary? Yeah, are you using, we are not even using five years old phones. We are not at all using even 10 years old scooters and they are all vintage cars and scooters. I want a latest iPhone as far as my usage is concerned, but I want to give education to my students based on 1904 Act. Is it not nonsense in your country? Ask this question very, very boldly. Is it not? I want the latest things as far as my life is concerned. But I want to get educated based on 118 years old act. Who is responsible for this? All stakeholders. Leave it and things start making on new lines. It is possible. Sir, when we see the hmm. pre pre medieval Indian yeah. history, um, hmm. before enslavement and stamping matters and all that, see almost hmm. all the research and innovations of the world, hmm. India was the number one position. Yeah. I mean, even when I was going through so many things, mm -hmm. see, until 16th century, nobody, apart from Indians, nobody even knew that Earth was a sphere. They were, even recently I was going through a map, and they had some flatter concepts and so many concepts, even the so-called developed nations of this world, European countries, mm -hmm. is what I'm saying. And we knew everything, from science to medicine to health sciences, everything. But then after that, colonization, our education system, but I know. So, sir, my suggestion here is yes, something has happened in the past. How my suggestion is forget about it. Let us think of building a new India which is based on totally new thinking. Yes, yeah. if that has to happen, yes. Indic education system should be revived now, sir. Yeah, that's why I said that. See, I have given that suggestion also re envisioning. You see this particular point also. My vision should be changed. Yeah. Is it not? My vision about railways means what? 20 km speed. You today you see one day Bharat, I think trains, 150 km speed. Revisioning. My vision of telephone, dead. 
and uh, today uh, my revisioning is 5G phone. I think by August, sorry, by October, 5G will be there. Re envision. Only thing it is not happening in education. That is the biggest challenge. Yes, uh, what I yeah. totally meant was uh, huh. in order to develop a very good education model, we need to look back at our roots. Yes, we just we take we'll do it. Approach. We'll do it. Whatever is good in the past, let us continue it. Whatever should be revised or uh, remodeled, we should think on uh, those lines also. That should be taken into consideration. Is it not? We just keep on, you cannot think of repeating whatever is there in the past also. Is it not? Take the good one things, leave the bad things. Is it not? Yes. Sir, uh, is there any one unique quality that our higher education and that our Indian higher education system has compared to other countries' education systems? Is there? Is there any one unique quality, uh, one quality that separates us from other countries, and how we could develop on that, sir? Uh, my analysis is sustainability. We have sustained all these years. Though Indian history has seen a lot of onslaughts also, we have not given up what we had all these days. That is the uniqueness of uh, Indian society. We are able to sustain, though we had a lot of invasions, though we had uh, foreign rule for many centuries also, still Indianness exists in our country. That is the uniqueness of India. And that should be appreciated. That's why once again, we are able to rebounce. That's why we say today, we cannot think of 21st century without Indians. In any field, medical, academics, engineering, science, technology, policy making, everywhere the Indian's presence is felt all over the world because of our quality of sustenance. Any other uh, questions or uh, observations? Huh? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir, for sharing such enlightening thoughts with us. We are indeed privileged. With this, we have come to an end of this event. I take this opportunity to extend my sincere gratitude and propose the vote of thanks on behalf of the entire fraternity of CMR University School of Legal Studies to our respected and most distinguished guest speaker of the day, Dr. Vithal Podar, for sparing his valuable time and for gracing this meeting. Thank you so much, sir, for such knowledge enriching and interactive session. I would also like to thank our respected Dean, Professor Dr. T. R. Subramanya, sir, without whom this program would not have been possible. Thank you, sir, for always supporting us in all our endeavors and organizing such knowledge and mission sessions. I would further like to thank our beloved Director, Dr. B. J. Praneshwaran, sir. I would also extend my thanks to all the faculties for their presence and support. I would also like to thank all the participants for patiently listening to the session and interacting. Thank you everyone for being here and gracing the session with your presence. Thank you, have a good day. <laughs> students kindly note, the first year students who have given their names for the moot court